Uh, and we have to the left side of the map in the red color the player for evil genius I give you Puma and he is up against none other than FXO Lucky starting at the six o'clock start position in the blue color Lucky losing to Polt in the other semi-final with three to one some really really great games and this is exactly the same matchup that both these players played in their semi-finals yep so let's find out how they adapted after their losses. Yeah, they should both be pretty warmed up. Gotta say, these are very noteworthy spawn positions. Puma's third base, only a hop, skip, and a jump away from the main base of Lucky. It's gonna make drop play oh so effective here. Uh, and uh, uh, quite frankly, the, uh, the, the ability of Puma to push towards, uh, or, or I guess expand in the direction that he's pushing is, is also very, very powerful. It, it allows his expansions to act as staging grounds for his, for his attacks. Uh, it's, uh, in these positions, it's almost kind of like playing Zalnaka Caverns, for example. Terran kind of expands to the middle, rallies to the middle, and attacks from the middle. And uh, we have seen a lot of drop play by Puma in his games yeah. against Stefano. Stefano was able to completely shut down the attacks, but I think Lucky will have a really hard time to do exactly the same thing. So let's see if Puma is going to be uh, more successful in this first map of the best of five that he's playing right now. We have him with gas, and uh, well, Ben, is he going for the Reaper build once again? Certainly a build that you can do on Terminus. Yeah, yeah, uh, looks like it. Uh, Lucky has gone for the 15 hatch. He's forgotten about this drone. Okay, gets the hatch down uh, to 15 supply, so 15 hatch, probably 15, 16 spawning pool. Really wonder if these Korean players take note of players like Stefano and, and try to steal things from them, you know, ideas or play styles. Given Stefano's performance in uh, the last few games, I definitely think they're going to take note. And Stefano has been beating so many Koreans, not only at the uh, Aces ROG this weekend, but also in the past. Uh, a couple of games against uh, Marine King comes to mind uh, when he lost against Stefano 2-0 at the ESWC. There are just a lot of matches, and we have Stefano. He's kind of the last foreign hope that we have. But one thing to note, we had an awesome game between uh, Lucky and Mana, by the way. In the last game, really some a little bit of a small upset and that decided the game in Lucky's favor. It could have been Mana playing in those semifinals. So Lucky had quite a put in a lot of effort in order to get here. Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, first Reaper on the way for Puma. About to pop out, he is expanding right behind it. So Reaper expand. Spawning pool gonna finish up for Lucky. He's got enough money to start Queens at both bases and, and get that Ling speed going. He's gonna have a very fast Zergling speed. At the same time, we now have the Reaper out on the map trying to get into the main base of Lucky. And with all the high grounds and low grounds that we have, he can just jump into it. So far, we don't see any Overlord scouting for Lucky. Well, here we go. One Overlord rally towards the right side of the map. And he knows that there's one, yeah, one Reaper in position. The Zerglings trying to take it down. And as long as he's fighting on creep, the Lings are actually a little bit faster than the Reaper. They have, been, they have to be very, very careful, though. Yep, uh, Reaper already doing uh, a little bit of poking and prodding. Has only killed... Has he killed a Ling? I think he killed one Ling. Uh, but the Queens are about to pop out, and with the Queens, the Reaper becomes a lot less capable of doing any damage. Uh, as we see the Queen coming out, and immediately Puma relinquishes his attempts at harass. Uh, first Command Center finishing, second Command Center also going up. So uh, once more, going back to that like, double expand style. Didn't work very well versus Stefano, but Lucky is a different opponent, so maybe there will be a different outcome. Yeah, exactly. Puma is doing the same thing that he did against Stefano, so we'll see if Lucky is able to uh, completely capitalize on it as well. Stefano was crushing Puma, and he was just making sure that every single risk that Puma took was completely exploited by him. Uh, so Lucky might be in a position to do the same. He certainly watched the last few games in order to prepare for his matchup. And now we have Lucky just adding additional drones, trying to completely drone up. His circling speed is kicking in any second, and he's already at 43 supply against 30. Yeah, uh, looking pretty good in the, in the Zerg side of the world. 34 drones to 24 SCVs. Uh, this triple orbital, though, really makes Puma's economy awesome. So I, uh, like, it just seemed like he never really got comfortable against Stefano, but if he's able to work you know, off three bases and really macro hard with triple orbital, Puma's going to have so much money and he's going to be able to make so many units. We've got a Roach Warren coming down for Lucky. Oh, look at this very cute little wall at the Zelnaga Tower. The Roach Warren is actually really, really interesting, especially because Lucky is kind of known to uh, sometimes all in his opponent with the Roach and Baneling attacks. And usually oh, you start it, it as soon... Oh, there's the Baneling Nest, exactly. 
Usually we see this strategy roughly at around 36 to 37 uh, drones, and this is exactly what's happening right now. Puma doesn't have too many scouting informations. He does not know about the Bane Lane Nest. He has no oh, idea. Now, now he headed knows. into the base, and there it is. Yep, gonna get a couple of drone kills. He's got a lot of drone kills here is Puma. Uh, and he also got a great scout off and immediately starts, actually he's already had siege mode going, uh, starts a couple of bunkers though. Look at this great uh, scouting by, uh, by Puma. Hellions getting in there, seeing everything. Uh, no roaches actually in production yet. It's just, uh, just lings coming out for Lucky. Finally cleans up the last of those Hellions, but Puma knows exactly what's coming. And, and that's uh, gonna be a huge problem for Lucky because he was just trying to go for the for the Roach and Baneling all in, cancels the Baneling is now yeah. upon realizing that he has just no chance pulling it off. Puma already preparing for it and he did quite a lot of damage with those Hellions. It was a really good early game harassment by Puma. The evil genius player is now looking a lot better than he is in his games against Stefano. Yeah, uh, definitely. And, and it's all about what you know. Uh, he wasn't really able to figure out what was happening uh, when he played against Stefano, whereas here against Lucky, he gets a lot of great scouting. Lucky going to drop a macro hatchery. He's on double Evo chamber, so he's going to start transitioning already, working on taking out the rocks in his third base. So, uh, as you said, he doesn't think that he's going to be able to succeed with the Baneling stuff against uh, against a Puma who knows what's up. So he's just going to try to try to macro. At the same time, we have double engineering bay for Puma, trying to get all those upgrades. So he's kind of even with Lucky now, while trying to expand again, taking down the destructible rocks at the third base, and we already have the Orbital Command in position. So, a very nice position for Puma to be in. He has a very decent amount when it comes down to his harvesters, 47 against 53, three bases against two, and even though Puma now getting an expansion on his own, uh, sorry, lucky that is, Puma is looking pretty good. Yeah, uh, the rock's almost down there in the third base, so uh, lucky will be able to start that expansion very, very soon. Uh, right now, Puma is getting his star put up, adding armories. He's got his 1-1 upgrades a little more than halfway done, so everything looking really great in Camp Puma right now. Uh, third place match means these guys are fighting for $2,000. Three grand for third, 1,000 for first. So, uh, I mean, that's a pretty big chunk of change. Both these guys are going to want it really badly. Definitely a lot of money, and uh, they will definitely take this serious. We have now also the armory being built for a Puma who wants to start with two two upgrades as soon as possible, as soon as plus one plus one finishes. Both of them are really cautious right now, playing a little bit more passive. We don't see any early game aggression just yet. After his uh, all in attempt was scouted, Lucky just tried to resort to a macro game, is building the third base now, already taking gas, taking a lot of it. And upon reaching the lair tech, he immediately throws down the um, infestation pit. So not going for a spire just yet. We'll probably see this later on, but for now, the infestation pit will do. Getting all these upgrades and a little bit of the style that Stefano used on a metal, uh, on Adrena, like Antigua shipyard. Yeah, very similar. Uh, I'm, I'm actually really <laughs> impressed with the... Uh, 20 drones. Yeah. 20 drones at once, it's sick. Really impressed with the Overlord blanket that Lucky has outside of his bases. He's, he's not going to miss any drops at all. Uh, Infestation Pit finishing up now for the Zerg. 71 drones to 60 SCVs. Uh, Puma's out in the middle of the map, and uh, that's a pretty respectable army. Fungal's not going to be ready anytime soon. There's no Baneling Nest. Is there a Baneling Nest? He, I know that he had one and canceled it, but I don't think he ever rebuilt it. No, he did not. So no Baneling Nest anywhere on the map right now. So not a real good answer to the bio of Puma, at least for the time being. The fourth base attempt of Lucky is now being shut down, being scouted by Puma, and immediately he sends a bunch of his Marines over. Combat shield is not done just yet, will kick in any second. And we still have a bunch of Zerglings trying to uh, completely cut off the reinforcements for Puma, who is currently on 128 supply, he's sieged up with his tanks in a nice position. Has to be careful though, the Marines have access to the Xelnaga Watchtower. We don't have Banings just yet, but plus two, plus two is being researched. And this Drop. is exactly what Stefano did against Puma on Antigua Shipyard. Drop in the back of uh, Lucky main right now, Kalgor. Uh, Marines killing a couple of SCVs here. Lucky does respond pretty adequately. He loses, uh, he's lost eight workers in total this game, so uh, not, uh, not not exactly terrible, terrible damage. He's done a pretty good job of reacting there. Fungal's, uh, or Pathogen Gland's finishing up, so Fungal will be out with these first couple of Infestors. Uh, the Lings of Lucky getting really chased around the map. Uh, and here's the attack by oh. Lucky, going in for the kill, trying to attack with 1-1 upgrades against the Marines and Tanks. A lot of the Zerglings are already gone, and Lucky is actually dropping in supply. This defense is just too good for Lucky to take on, and Puma 
I don't know, he is on 144 supply and I have no idea why Lucky actually checked into the sieged up tanks. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a little bit silly and he didn't, uh, he didn't control those lings that well. They kind of chased marines and got shredded up by those siege tanks. Now Puma going to push forward, pick off some of these creep tumors. It was a little silly for Lucky to do that. He wasn't actually under any real pressure. I mean, Puma has a very aggressive stance on the map, but he's, uh, he's not actually threatening to do any damage at this point. So Lucky could have waited, certainly. And the funny thing is that at the same time he started to push out with the Zerglings and attack the siege tanks and of course all the marines. He had 13 infestors in production. He could have waited for the infestors and then tried to lead with a couple of infested swarm eggs to bait the tank shots, the first ones that is, and then use the fungals in addition. So I have no idea what he did there. This was a little bit of an odd timing to push out. I think any Zerg player can relate with the feeling of, oh god, Terran's creeping towards me, so I've got to do something about it now. And I think that was just a, a case of Lucky making a wrong decision. A little bit of a drop here at the edge of Lucky's main base. He's going to come, uh, come down with some investors, a couple of fungals. We'll make short work of these Marines. Lucky supply blocked, and that's something we've seen in his group stage games against Strello quite often. So once again, he doesn't really pay attention to his overlord count. He needs to be a little bit more careful. Another drop attempt at the left, bottom left of the map has been shut down, and Puma is just now everywhere. He's already heading towards the right side of the map with another drop. So he is on plus three, plus three very soon, started the upgrades, and he's looking very good on 190 supply against 157. Once again, dropping, but this time, Lucky's ready. And this time the drop gets caught. Very, very quickly, Medivac's gonna go down. All those Marines will also die. This one, like, look at this, like, super manly Marine right here. He's just chilling on the edge of the creeps, like, come at me, bro. And oh, look at this drop in the back of the third base. Uh, again, lucky in position, so it doesn't do anything. I'm still so impressed with the come at me, bro Marine. He's just like, it's like, whatever, I don't care. A couple of times, Lings have gone after him, and like, siege tanks shoot him, but it's no, it's no big deal. He just, he just, he takes it. They are the borrowed infestors. He's trying to lead with the infested swarmix now. We have 130. Uh, is it 113? Yes, I think so. 150 zerglings by now. <laughs> this guy's such a hero. He's just. He's just <laughs> he doesn't even care. And here they are, the infestors. Where are the infested swarmix? Is he trying? Yeah, he's trying to bait some tank fire. He's actually trying to just borrow behind his opponent. There they are. And oh. immediately the circling stream in as a follow-up. Will it be enough though? Lucky is losing so yeah. many units right now. Just look at all these circling dying due to upgrades for the links. There's the GG.